birds of a feather flock together and if they don't people still think that they do hey guys welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is deasia and today i'm going to be doing a chit chat get ready with me while i talk about some things i wish my older sister taught me that i'm now going to be teaching you guys don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and let's hop straight into this video starting off with the lashes that i've used i like to use cluster lashes because i really like the look of lash extensions but i don't have the time to be spending laying down in a chair for three hours so i get my cluster lashes from amazon i actually really like this pack i really like the lashes because it's like really short bands these short bands give a lot of range which is what i really like not the biggest fan of the glue i feel like i've used better glue i like for my lashes to last about five to seven days minimum and i think these lashes are on day three maybe day four now the lashes are on day four now so they're not doing too bad but i feel like i have used better glue so before doing my makeup i actually like to start off with my edges i'm going to go in with my easy edges and because it is summertime it is literally a heat wave i like to put literally the smallest amount of got to be glue like this one on my edges and it holds all day through the sweat through everything so now i've had the urge to do this video for so long um somebody mentioned to me that i should do a video like this i like to think that i give great advice i've actually been told several times that i do give great advice which i i actually genuinely believe at this point um it's very important to take people's advice with a grain of salt and i try not to give like my unsolicited advice to people but typically if i'm talking to a friend i like to ask my friends do you want me to be for with you yes or no because you don't know if they're ready to accept that information you don't know if they have the capacity the emotional capacity to understand what you're saying I'm gonna be showing you guys my everyday makeup routine. I like to use Shine and Jam on my eyebrows because I feel like I like the hold personally. I like how it keeps my eyebrows the way I put them throughout the day. And I know there's some eyebrow gels that do that, but honestly, I haven't, I haven't got, I haven't found my eyebrow gel. And until then these are my dynamic duo moving on because this is my everyday makeup routine i'm going to be using a mix of drugstore products and sephora products starting off with my maybelline 30 hour hold foundation love this stuff the first thing i want to start off with is something that i feel like um i had to learn the harvest you cannot force yourself in environments that are not for you there, like there's no such thing as being the exception if the environment is not for you you need to not be in that environment and i used to think that i could you know i could be in an environment and it wouldn't affect me or the people around me wouldn't affect me but that is not true it's not true at all you can tell yourself that you are strong-minded and that you don't succumb to peer pressure and you're headstrong and all that but the point is you cannot flourish in an environment that is not good for you you cannot grow in an environment that is not serving you so if you are always hanging around people who who vape or um who swear a lot or who are you know um i don't know serial daters if you're only focused on not vaping or not swearing you might just become a serial dater because you weren't paying attention to that because you thought it wasn't something that you needed to pay attention to and that just so happened to be the thing that slipped between the cracks like there's no such thing as being the good exception in a bad environment if a place or people are not good for you you cannot grow as a person you might pick up on tendencies that you didn't realize that you were picking up on you just accepted that that's something that you kind of want to do now because you have normalized it in your life and that also ties into don't force yourself into spaces that aren't meant for you unfortunately if a space is not meant for you you go where you're loved if you notice that you feel uncomfortable in certain spaces or around certain people that is literally your body telling you you should not be there you shouldn't wait until you feel like you've had enough to leave one thing about red flags is if there's one that's probably multiple and just because they've only violated one does not mean that you should stay for them to violate some more because ultimately that's what's gonna happen even if there's no actual tangible evidence stating i should probably leave now if you have the thought saying you should not be here leave since i was talking about friends and environments that you shouldn't be in i'll point out environments that you should be in be friends with like-minded people you are a confident person be friends with confident people if you are an outgoing person be friends with outgoing people if you are an ambitious person be friends with ambitious people because this world is crabs in a bucket a lot of the things that we see in friends we might not recognize is not good for us and oftentimes people realize once it's a little bit too late people often realize once they've been hurt so badly or they feel like they're on their last legs 
you don't have to wait until we're on our last legs to leave it is okay to leave prematurely it is okay to leave respectfully you don't have to wait for it to become a big thing people around you play a big role in shaping who you are and who you could become you know they're saying be friends with millionaires become a millionaire be friends with bums become a bum as I've gotten older, I've noticed that one emotion that is so complex to recognize in other people is actually jealousy. I'm not saying, oh, this person's on vacation. I'm so jealous that they're on vacation. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about jealousy as an envy, like the parts that you don't see. Like being friends with jealous people can literally be a nightmare. Oftentimes the people who are jealous or who are envious of you, don't even know that they're actually envious of you. You wore a sundress maybe like five days after they wore a sundress and now they're coming to you saying, why are you wearing a sundress? You know what you're doing. You're, you're trying to take attention away from me. You're trying to copy me. If you were just living your life and it was never that calculated, please be aware of those people. Insecure people are some of the most dangerous people you could be around and i'm not saying it's dangerous to have insecurities i'm saying insecure people people who are rooted in their insecurities are not good people to have around you especially if you trigger their insecurities you will never know peace and it is completely normal to have insecurities everybody has insecurities and honestly it's your job to talk yourself through those insecurities. But people who listen with their triggers, especially when it comes to their insecurities and often project their insecurities onto you or make you feel like you cannot praise yourself because they have insecurities. It's time to wrap that up. On to my next topic, be busy. Be busy and have a life. Have a schedule. Have a schedule that you stick to. Have hobbies that you actually enjoy so that your life does not revolve around other people and social media and honestly that is a lot easier said than done and it's crazy that i'm even bringing this up because i literally just deleted tiktok from my phone like i'm i'm personally on a tiktok lens because tiktok is the most addictive app on my phone right now and it is so time consuming and if i'm saying that someone who is hyper aware of their screen time i can only imagine what it's like to not be hyper aware of your screen time how i think about it is there's 24 hours a day and your screen time is 12 hours that means you're on your phone for 12 hours of the 24 hours which leaves you with 12 hours in 12 hours you are sleeping you are eating you are talking to people you are looking up from your phone for a total of 12 hours and even if you sleep for like let's say even six hours that leaves you with six hours of being in the real world like since i've started thinking about things like that i cannot unsee it i recently deleted tiktok because my screen time was at seven hours how am i on my phone for seven hours a day i i literally i i don't understand it so after thinking about it like that i've just decided that something's got to change like i personally i i don't even like being on my phone even when i'm on my phone for too long i literally lock my phone and just sit there and think allow my brain to think and daydream and use my imagination as a consumer it is your responsibility to regulate how often you are on your phone like you have to have a life outside of tv shows outside of social media outside of listening to music like what are your actual hobbies what is a skill that you can say you can do and you can do well what is something that brings you joy in just doing and if you don't know find it like learn a new language play an instrument go for a job go to a pottery lesson like the things that are available to us in today's society is literally limitless you can do absolutely anything you said that you wanted to do you just have to start by picking something have a life off of your phone like i love being unreachable I love it, it's probably my favorite thing. I love after a long day and my phone has 50,000 notifications. Cause yeah, I'm not a girl and I was busy and I was unreachable. That's how you should be at all times. Busy and unreachable and working on what's gonna take you to the next phase of your life that you are trying to get to. Now, just a little, a little side note, I am using both brushes and my beauty blender because I like putting on my makeup with my brushes, but I like blending things out with my beauty blender. Like, I like taking excess product off of my face with my beauty blender. Do you notice that somebody around you treats you really well, but treats other people very poorly? Unfortunately, that does not mean that you're a great person and they love you and that you're an exception remember what i told you about exceptions what it means is it's not your turn yet but your turn will come eventually and the last thing you want is to witness how 
what they did to somebody else is what they're doing to you that is the last thing that you want if you see that somebody has a history of treating people poorly unfortunately that just means that that person is not for you especially if you often don't agree with how they treat people it is important as a teenager and as a young adult to learn detachment learn how to detach from people because the only thing that keeps you and them together is your attachment to them this goes for friendships this goes for breakups if you feel like there's somebody that you need to release and that you shouldn't be engaging with learn how to detach because then you're going to be stuck asking yourself why can't i let this person go why am i always back with this person xyz xyz it's because you have to learn how to detach from them holding on to people that you know within yourself that you need to detach from is only going to cause more disappointment within you it's only going to increase your tolerance of how much you're willing to accept from people when in reality your tolerance should not be high at all you, that's why people say you have to leave after the first red flag because there's more red flags you have to let them do what they would rather do and you do what you would rather do and if that means that you guys are not meant to be in each other's lives then that's okay there's more people you have not met all the people that are going to love you in this lifetime and if there's one thing that i had to learn when it comes to detaching from people is it is a let go or be dragged type of situation like if you do not let go of people when you know in your heart you are supposed to let go of them you are only going to regret it i cannot recall a single time where i did not let go of somebody when i knew that i should have and i didn't regret it my lashes are already on so it just makes my makeup feel like it took two seconds and as you can see i like to put my blush in a little bit of a c shape like like this i don't know why i just feel like it just looks like i'm glowing like i always get compliments on my blush and i literally love it like blush is that girl my favorite part of my makeup is my blush Ooh, that might be a little bit too much my favorite tip from this video i would say is romanticizing everything if there's one thing that i learned being a hopeless romantic it is how to romanticize if you're trying to get into going to the gym get into the habit of fitness get some cute gym clothes and put those on and go to the gym even if you don't know what you're doing even if you're just walking on the treadmill because it's a look good feel good type of thing like if you like flowers go to the store and buy yourself some flowers even if you got them for yourself the point of flowers is not to have a man get them for you the point of flowers is not to always gift them to somebody you can gift yourself flowers i love gifting myself flowers it makes me feel like i'm romanticizing my life a nice sunday morning get myself some flowers cut off the stems play some music put on a cute little sundress and live your best life in my head i'm just because that's how it should be like romanticize your life you only get one life you're only young once i feel like that's why maintenance vlogs have become such a big thing because you are romanticizing everything that you do that typically is not fun getting your nails done is not fun sitting down in a chair going like this and having them your hands for an hour is not fun getting a wax is not fun but it's been romanticized which is why so many people want to do it which is why it appears fun how to romanticize the things that you don't want to do doing homework go to a cute little cafe get some boba sit down and do your homework boom you want to go to the gym think that the end goal is just the cute little picture that you're going to take at the end of your your gym session when you have your little gym pump and you feel good take that cute little picture and caption it i didn't even want to be here boom you romanticize it like learn how to romanticize your life because i feel like it just makes chores so much better like everybody has to do it might as well force yourself to enjoy it and i feel like that is something i will always do in my personal life regardless of if i'm filming or if i'm not i will always romanticize everything because why not romanticize everything and as you can see i also like to put my highlighter the same way maybe not like all over my blush but like in the little inner corner of that little c shape it's giving glowing it's giving skin you know how often i get compliments on it i literally love it and watch you try it and get compliments too my setting spray because it's summer i like to use a dewy finish because i like the look of glowing glistening in the sun and my last step is my lip liner as my everyday lip liner i like to use something that's kind of subtle and boom you guys done quickly after my i finish my makeup i literally just figure out what i'm gonna do with my hair and i put my hair in a ponytail yesterday 
Maybe I should wear it down today because I haven't worn it down yet. Whenever I have braids, I never wear my braids just like out for some reason. I feel like it always ends up annoying me. I'm going to take a few French strands, put them in a little ponytail under my hair, just like so. I mean, I've been in a silver jewelry phase lately and it's crazy because I don't have much silver jewelry. I definitely need some more. And just like that, I am done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And definitely leave a comment down below if there's some more topics that you'd like me to discuss. Or send me a quick DM at that day's girl and I'll definitely either get back to you or incorporate it in my next chit chat. Get ready with me. I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye! Also, peep the skin. Shout out to my dermatologist. She got me so good. Bye!